done. Let me tell you about a time when Jesus got into my boat. I was with my longtime colleague, David Lawrence. We were directing a short-term program in Guatemala in a very, very difficult area of Guatemala, the site of the Civil War, up in the Ashil country in the highlands of Guatemala, very rugged place. We had a team of students. We worked at a malnourishment clinic, very, very sad, an orphanage. I can't tell you how many mass graves I've walked by in the Ashil Triangle. On the weekends, we would hike into small villages that had no roads. We just trails. We'd hike into trails and go to teach people the best we could. We were there with a local evangelist and a, a missionary who translated for us. One particular weekend, we hiked into the small town of Trapachito. Probably 120 people in the town. We actually had a very long 12-hour hike through the mountains to get there. There had been a landslide because of the monsoon-like rains that had washed out any roads that we had started out on. It was very dangerous. We hiked over that with about 12 students. We hike all day. We hike up a tall mountain. We get to this village, and the entire village had come out to greet us. Uh, they almost immediately give us a, something to eat and then what they had and ushered us into their church, which was basically a woodshed. It was made maybe for 50 people, but the entire village and the 12 of us, 13, 14 of us, jammed in there. Wood, rough wood sides, rough wood planks on cinder blocks, dirt floor, bad PA system hooked up to a car battery. <laughs> they all have that. I don't know why. And they are so joyful. We begin singing. They only knew about three songs. In me corazon, corazon, corazon. We're singing over and over again. Short testimonies. And the students are loving it. This is what they've come for, right? Short-term mission with the people in the rugged place. Jessica's up front and she's you know, dancing and clapping. Tavis, who's in the Marine Corps, he's next to me, he's buff, he's, he's tough. Joe, Cuban-American from Miami, he's excited, he's, you know, doing the samba. About seven o'clock, wow, this has gone a long time, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, I am not kidding. 11 o'clock, ask David Lawrence. 12 o'clock, he's here with his kids. 1 o'clock, we're in an all-night prayer meeting. I just didn't know it. <laughs> well, you know, Jessica is no longer, you know, keeping time with her hands. She's keeping time with her foot like this. And uh, Joe is not dancing. He's kind of sitting down <laughs> and, and doesn't look very happy. Looks a little grumpy. And Tavis, the Marine Corps guy, he's out. I mean, out. He's been doing this number, you know, kind of, and uh, just gave it up on, on the wood plank, you know, big impression on his face, drool coming down his mouth. Tavis, wake up, man. About then, Tomas, who was the mayor of Naba, ground central for liberation theology, the town of which we worked, jumps up on stage, beautiful brother in Christ. He goes, oh, we forgot, we forgot, to, we forgot to tell the gringos. Why, why we're so excited? Um, you know, he said, look, I want to explain why we would stay up all night to praise God. I was a poor, illiterate man. I was, I, I beat my wife. I was a drunkard. I didn't know anything about Jesus until one, one day. A missionary gave me a passage of scripture. I could barely read it, but what I remember is, he whom Jesus holds in his hands can never be plucked, he said, stripped away. I gave my life to Jesus. And then I, I went and told Nicholas about what Jesus had done in my life. And Nicholas came to Jesus. And then we went and told Maria. And, and uh, at this point, he has Maria stand up. Maria stands up. She waves. <laughs> you know, hi. And uh, <laughs> we go through the entire village. And everyone stands up, waves. As Tomas tells the story, he said at the end, there are 20 people left in our village who don't know Jesus, and we pray for them every day. <laughs> 
<laughs> and David Lawrence went back the next year with a different team, but we pray for these people in our village every day. There's only 10 who don't know Jesus. <laughs> next year we went back. There's only five who don't know Jesus, and we pray for them every day. So they don't have a chance. <laughs> But it's not always been easy, Thomas said. It's been very difficult. We have seen God's faithfulness to us. So the three of us, the first who came to Christ, Nicholas was our preacher. He preached powerfully the word of God. Many people came to Jesus under him. But when the Marxist rebels came to town, they told Nicholas to stop preaching the gospel. But he would not, pre he would not stop preaching the gospel. He was so brave. And so they took Nicholas out to that rock over there. We all turn, we all look at the rock, and they cut off his head. And then they hung the, the elders from the rafters. They followed Jesus as Lord to the end. And that's why we are so excited because we know where they are. And we know how God has cared for us. Two o'clock. Three o'clock. Next morning, gathered up the students, walked out to that rock. Jesus got in my boat. <laughs> 